Hello and welcome to another video on room acoustics. Today we're going to be learning all about room acoustics specifically for YouTubers and your home recording YouTube studio. So before we jump in, I have a free resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide. It goes perfectly with this video. So definitely download that and follow along with the video or download it after you watch the video. It'll help out a lot. To download that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, let's dive into this lesson for YouTubers on how to get great acoustics out of your room. So the first thing you want to do is start with the corners. You may have heard the term bass trap before. So what we want to do is place an acoustic panel in all of our corners of our room. In a traditional rectangle room is what I'll be using in this uh, example here. But if you have an oddly shaped room, any corner is where you're going to want to put a acoustic panel that straddles that corner. So the term bass trap is really just any acoustic panel. Usually they're thicker. Usually I like to use four inches of insulation in them and you can build your own panels or buy them. If you're like me, you might enjoy doing a weekend project where you build a panel, but there's no shame in buying a panel and they're honestly fairly affordable. The two companies I recommend purchasing panels from are GIK Acoustics and they can, they're also based out of Europe and then also Music City Acoustics here in Nashville. I generally like this company and they're local and I like people to support them and they make amazing panels. So you can go on their website and check out Bass Traps specifically and you will find that there are many different options. There are some that you can flush mount into your corner. They look clean in the corner and those are great. Or you can buy rectangular panels, stack them and place them in the corner. I generally like to go floor to ceiling with my base traps because honestly the best use of that base trap is where the floor and the uh, walls meet and where the walls and the ceiling meet. So in that apex where there's the trihedral corner. So make sure to try to cover that if you can. Once you have your bass traps in place, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a great listening position. Now the listening position may seem counterintuitive if you're a YouTuber because you're like, hey, I'm not mixing music, Wilson, this doesn't matter. But even when you're listening back to audio or even recording audio at your desk, having your listening position figured out in your room will be helpful. So what I recommend doing is facing the shortest wall in your room. So that would be in a rectangle, just facing that short wall and having the long walls on either side of you and then centering yourself on that wall. You can also use something called the 38% rule, which just means that the length of your room, if you multiply that by 0.38 or 38%, you will get the distance that your optimum listening position would be in that room. Now this is not a hard fast rule and I recommend experimenting, generally putting your speakers right up against the front wall and getting a normal distance from them that feels comfortable in your room will be plenty good for our YouTube studio. So keep that in mind. Now that we have our listening position figured out, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is set up your reflection free zone. Now this is a term in studios, like a recording studios, where we wanna have an ideal listening spot that doesn't have room reflections, so the speaker's sound doesn't bounce around the room. But it has an added bonus for YouTubers in that it'll make your audio, like I'm recording right now, sound really crisp and clean and you won't have any unwanted reflections bouncing around the room. Plus, when you listen back to your speakers when you're editing videos or editing music into your videos, what you're gonna be hearing is going to be accurate. So you'll be able to hear with clarity exactly how speech and music and dialogue and all that stuff mixes together in your YouTube videos. And you'll also be able to more easily mix in like EQ adjustments or reverb or anything like that on your vocal so that you know what you're doing is actually sounding like what you're hearing in the mixing phase. So the reflection free zone is fairly simple. What you want to do is hang usually two, maybe four panels if you have the budget on either side of your listening position. And this is to reduce the reflections from the speakers that hit that sidewall and come right back to your ears. You also want to hang what's known as an acoustic cloud above you. So this can be directly above your head and ideally covering the space over top of the speakers as well and the distance between you and the speakers. And usually this could be one two foot by four foot panel in a smaller room or two or maybe even upwards of four like I have in my 
home recording studio. I will say as a side note that hanging an acoustic cloud on the other side of your room, not where you're listening, will also help with controlling the acoustics in your room. And it's something that's probably worth doing, maybe not right away, but down the road as you save up more money for acoustics. Again, you can build your own acoustic clouds and your side panel traps. These can be bass traps if you're able to afford them and also have the space in your room because that will help with the acoustics. The thicker the panel, the better it will be at absorbing and treating the acoustics of your room. However, they also sell a lot of mid-range to high frequency range traps, which essentially are just acoustic panels that are a little thinner and hence they cost a little bit less. So you can also use those as well for your ceiling and side traps and you'll probably be fine for your YouTube studio. You can also buy specialty clips that allow you to easily hang your ceiling clouds and GIK Acoustics and Music City Acoustics both offer those as options if you buy from one of them. Next, if you have the budget, now what I just told you in the first three steps will do a tremendous amount in improving the acoustics of your room. The bass traps alone might be all you really feel like you need, and that's fine. But if you want to go the extra mile, the next step would be to hang acoustic panels on the back wall. Now I recommend using bass traps on the back wall because they'll do a better job of treating the acoustics in the room, but again you can use thinner traps as well. You could even use diffusion panels on the back wall. I don't usually recommend these for really small rooms because it can cause some problems with making actually the room sound worse, but if you have a generally mid-sized room, you could throw diffusion on the back wall and it tends to make the listening spot sound wider and bigger and make the room sound more enjoyable to listen to in general. Another great option, which I'll talk about in a second, is to use a mixture, diffusion, and absorber panel, and we'll talk about those. That's what I actually have in my studio on the back wall, and it is kind of a centerpiece and looks cool, as well as functioning as a acoustic element as well. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is how many panels should you hang in your room before you're like, I'm done? And that is generally up to you and your budget. First off, like I said before, you know, just the bass traps and the side panels in the cloud might exhaust your resources but in general 50 percent of the room if it's covered in acoustic absorption it will generally sound really good um, and i say generally because you got to use your ears even professionals when they design professional rooms they should go in the room listen and adjust as needed because we can't predict a room perfectly there's just way too many variables involved same thing for your youtube studio if you still feel like you want it to sound a little bit more controlled a little bit more dead then you want to add more absorption if it feels too dead then you might want to consider adding some diffusion panels or scatter plates which are just pieces of wood that sit in front of your uh, panels to add a little bit of scattering back in the room hence more life and liveliness to the room Lastly, if you're doing YouTube videos, you probably want your room to look really cool and awesome. And I'm not gonna lie, diffusion panels and scatter plates on top of acoustic panels are gonna look cooler than just plain fabric wrapped insulation acoustic panels. So if you're going down that route, I highly recommend using what are known as scatter plates. Music City Acoustics sells panels with scatter plates in front of them. These will do a good job of adding diffusion into the room, but also allowing sound to pass through and be absorbed as well. So they form a dual purpose and they will help your room tremendously. GIK Acoustics has plenty of really cool products with different scatter plates with even more artistic variations on them. And I would recommend using those like I have in my studio on the back wall. And actually the panel you see behind me is a scatter plate vocal booth that you can use as well. So use your artistic touch with this, especially because it is a YouTube video, YouTube creation studio. So the look, especially behind your camera is important. So have fun with that and look for panels that fit your style and your vibe. But remember the diffusion panels like quadratic diffusers or root diffusers can look really cool, but they might not do as much as putting in a absorption panels with scatter plates in front of them because absorption in general will make the room sound better quicker than just tons and tons of diffusion panels. All right. In conclusion, remember to start with your corners. Remember that you need to create the reflection free zone. Remember that you need to find your ideal listening position in the room. 
And then if you have the budget, add panels on the back wall. And then finally add in some fun diffusion and scatter plate panels to get the vibe just right in your room. And if you're still hearing like a flutter echo or a liveliness to the room, it still doesn't feel like it's treated right. Just add more acoustic panels so that you don't have large swaths of the wall or the ceiling that are not covered. And this will help to tighten up the sound in your room and your YouTube videos will definitely sound better. And I'm sure they'll actually look better too, with just more variation on the walls and cool lighting and stuff like that. All right. I hope this YouTube video has been helpful. Again, if you are on this journey, download that free acoustic treatment guide. It will go over everything we talked about in this video and you can read it and look at it and remember what I said. So download that right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. And I'll see you all next week with more lessons on soundproofing and acoustics.